his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy stand, they comfort me. Thou prepares the table before me in the presence of my name. Thou anointest my head with oil. Thy cup be seated. Run it closer. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me in the, all the days of my life. Now dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked and even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. The war shall rise against me. In this I will be confident. One thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. To behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle, shall he hide me he shall set me upon a rock, and now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore I will offer in this tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing ye, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. Whether I go, ye know, and the way ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. known me, ye shall have known my Father also, and from henceforth ye know him, and have seen
loving memorial of Mr. Johnny Allen Bush, Saturday, August 6, 2022 at 10 a.m. in the chapel of R.S. Lewis and Sons Funeral Home. I will read for you 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 1 and 2. Then we will have a prayer by Courtney Bush. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 says, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with all the house which is from heaven. May God have a blessing to the reading and hearing of his word. Gracious and eternal Father, we come to you, Lord. We come to you as a family, Lord, in need, God. In need, God, that we've lost a love in our dear Heavenly Father. A strong love one in the family, dear Heavenly Father. Father, but we're just asking for the strength to, to make it through, dear Heavenly Father. Father, look upon my grandmother. Look upon my mother. Look upon my aunt and my uncles. Look upon my cousins, dear Heavenly Father. Look upon my brother. Look upon each and every family member as they see here, dear Heavenly Father, and the ones that could make it, dear Heavenly Father. Father, we ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you just keep us lifted, dear Heavenly Father. Keep us strong, dear Heavenly Father. Keep us near, dear Heavenly Father. Keep us together, dear Heavenly Father. Keep us strong and faithful, dear Heavenly Father. Allow us to know that without you, God, without you, God, there'd be nothing, dear Heavenly Father. You don't make mistakes, dear Heavenly Father. He's just going to prepare a place for us, dear Heavenly Father, as he always does. Always taking care of us, dear Heavenly Father. He's another business. Amen. Next, we have a solo.
Amen. When we see Jesus, that man who hung, bled, and died for us, all of our suffering, all of our heartaches, all of our tears, it all will be over. Amen. At this time, we will have remarks. We ask that, that the individuals who are down for remarks will please come forth at this time to give remarks.
because I could count on Johnny to do things that oh, say best when I go out of town, he would get my mail, uh, even feed my dog. You know, like, he never hesitated on asking. And I guess me and his favorite thing was yard work. But it wasn't exactly my favorite, but something you got to do, you got to do it. And what happened was, I used to equate him with my brother. Man, they would be miserable all the fall, all the winter. There's no grass to cut. And I would tell him, said, man, I could walk by that tan grass and he'd be just smiling like I don't know what. I said, but now, you and my brother, Y'all can't wait until spring gets here and this stuff goes to the And like I said, when you gotta do it, you gotta do it. And I remember one time me and Johnny did something that you know we had to be young. We cut four yards in the cold one day. We were either young or dumb. <laughs> and like the neighbors was thankful for it. But now I don't gotta be like most old. See, my mama cut yard till she was 84. And more than 44, I was more than 44. We shared the job. Frisco, Frisco. We shared the cove, Archer Cove. And like, uh, it's just a blessing to have a neighbor like that. I'm gonna truly miss it. And also, when it comes time for holidays, if I didn't get up to cook something, I'm gonna have to get up to the Johnny had the cold smell it. To, you know, share some of his barbecue. And he had a lot of secrets on his barbecue, and I know he didn't show you two see all his tricks, did he? <laughs> because he did something one time that most people when they do those, they do pork ribs. But Johnny did some beef ribs. And I used to didn't think I liked beef ribs, but I got why I loved his beef ribs. And I just wanted to say thank you all. That I'm sorry because we go way back, way, way back. And remember, God knows what's best. We all gonna leave here. We don't. Cheryl brought it to the shop for the first time I ever met her. But ever since I met her, y'all. So rough on his arm. 
But uh, I used to love doing yard work with him. And uh, he used to take me down to Georgia with him to meet his other, uh, his other side of the family. And they treat me like family. Matter of fact, they treat me better. Food was on the table. He cared about his joints, all his grandkids. So it was one of him that did all of that. So you got me, Tusa, all his grandkids, grandson. It's time now to pitch in and help out. One of his things, I guarantee you that he won't to make sure his wife, Jordan, and that house and yard was taken care of. If he can say so. That's one of the things I know he want everybody to step up and do. And it was one of him that he was halfway disabled, and he still maintained it. So I'm telling all the grandsons, the nieces and the nephews, to pitch in. Pitch in and help uh, his wife take care of Joy. Don't give it her. I mean, she needs something. Come through. This time now, and just pick up that baton and go with what he did. One of the things I like, I always talk to him about, when I used to travel on the railroad, I met, met a lot of his friends. I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna get up. I'm gonna get on that my wife, so we don't talk too much. This uh, guy at the railroad, he used to give me a hard time every day. And uh, the guy that was gonna speak to Jack Dowling, he said, "That's Johnny Bush, uh, son-in-law." And when he told him that I was Johnny Bush, son-in-law, that man left me alone. <laughs> yeah, he, he's up off. But Johnny had a good name all through the railroad. We traveled like. Uh, Brother Hubbard said, all through Oklahoma, he is known all through his system of being himself. Uh, St. Louis, you John Bush, uh, son-in-law, I would love to call him while I was on the road and say this is one of your friends, and he loved it. But uh, I won't miss him. He come down that, that cold, he's sitting at the table, birthday, he said, come in, get you a cup of coffee. He always got something to eat, the door is always open, feeds you. He never turned nobody away. He was just a giving person. And like I said, he didn't have a lot, a lot of money, but he did good with what he had. He did good. But I just tell all the grandsons, nieces, nephews, it's time now to pick up. If you want to honor him, just take care of what he loves. Like I said, make sure his wife is good. Make sure that, like I said, that the yard is cut. And keep up the things that he did. But... That's all I want to say. I'm going to miss it. All right. Sorry. At this time, we would have a solo. I need the Lord to guide me every day, every day as I travel along this narrow way, this narrow way of affliction, Christmas. 
your attention just for a few moments to what perhaps uh, is a familiar scripture to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, I'm reading from the King James Version. It is here where these words are recorded. Let not your heart be troubled. 
ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And whether I go ye know, and that way ye know, Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest, and know, and how can we know the way? Verse 6 and finally it says, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, but by me. I want to use for a subject of encouragement this morning, a solution to a troubled heart. A solution to a troubled heart. The truth is that life hurts. You've been in life just a few days, you can agree with me this morning that life has a way of hurting. Yeah. Life has a way of hurting you to your core, to your heart. You turn on the TV and you see things that is happening in your neighborhoods, in your city, in your state, and it hurts. You've raised your children under the fear and admonition of God. and They go out and they do things that you did not teach them. Yeah. And it hurts to your heart. You become older and you go and you go to the doctors and uh, everything was going well and you go to the doctor and one doctor's visit and you receive bad news and it hurts to your heart. My brothers and sisters, those that are here, uh, Mrs. Bush and others that are here, you could perhaps feel the disciples' fear and hurt and pain this morning in John chapter 14. Because it's in John 14 that these disciples are heartbroken, they're hurt. Because Jesus, one who has been walking with them, Jesus, one who they have seen him perform miracles, turn water to wine. Jesus, who they have seen, who took two fish and five uh, body loaves of bread, fed 5,000 and had a banquet left over. That Jesus now is at the point in the text, he's getting ready to go to cross. He's getting ready to go to the cross and they are hurt, they are pained, they are broken, their hearts are pulled apart, similar to the fear and the hurt and the agony and the anxiety that the family is feeling this morning as you've lost your loved one, you're hurt, your heart is broken. These disciples in the text this morning, they're feeling perhaps the same way because Jesus is now at the point, they're looking at him but he's looking at the cross. Here it is. Jesus says to them, I'm going to leave you, but I'm not going to leave you alone. My word and comfort this morning to you, Sister Bush, is that although Brother Bush has left you physically, although perhaps you're struggling right now, I want to suggest to you that Jesus, our God, has not left you alone. He's left a comfort to hear with you, to walk with you, to be with you, and to help and to aid you. It's not designed for you to get through this by yourself, but you have help from on high. The psalmist says, I look to the hills for which cometh my help. My help comes from the Lord. Amen. My brothers and sisters, it's in John chapter 14 that as these disciples are brokenhearted, as they are hurt this morning, Jesus says to them, I know that you are hurt. I know that you are broken hearted. You are fearful because you don't know how you're going to handle tomorrow without me. But I'm not going to be here physically, but I'm going to be here spiritually. He says to them, although you're hurt and broken hearted, he says, let not your heart be troubled. I, I want to give you three keys this morning to help to bring this cure to a troubled heart, this solution to a troubled heart, to help you get through the pain, the hurt, and the agony. The pain's going to be there, the agony's going to be there, but to help you go through the days to come, 
uh, to help you get through the holidays when you're looking at an empty seat there, to help you get through Christmas morning when you get up out of the bed and your loved one is not there. The text offers us this morning three keys that it helps us get through these times today. Key number one, he says, although you're hurting, he says, let not your heart be troubled. Although you're in pain, in agony, although you have cried tears until you can't cry anymore, he says that to get through this hurt in your heart, he says, number one, you can trust in his promise. You can trust in his promise. It's in the text. For it says in verse two, it says, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. He says to them that I'm leaving this promise to you that where I am, you may not be there right now. He says, but I'm going to prepare a place for you because if we get to the place that God has prepared for us and we are not prepared for the place, it won't be long before the place start looking like us. So he prepares the place while we're still here getting prepared to go to that prepared place. He gives us a promise by saying in the text, if it were not so, I would have told you. This is what he says ultimately. He says, you can count on my promise. If I wasn't going to prepare a place for you, I would have told you. You can count on my word. You can hold on to my promise. I suggest to you that the word of God says before one word changes, heaven and earth shall pass away. You can't count on my promises because things may happen and I won't be able to keep my promises. But there is one this morning that can be with you in this time, that can help and aid you. He gives us a promise that he's going to prepare a place for you. He says to us, if I wouldn't have gone, I would have told you. You can count on me. You can Put the farm on it. You can bet on it that Jesus says, if I wasn't going to do what I'm saying, I would have told you. But he says to us ultimately, this morning, Brother Bush has gone that way. He's speaking to us that we have to go that way as well. He's prepared that place for us, and it's a promise that he's made to us. That he's prepared the place, and we're going to get there. When you look at this promise, some perhaps suggest that it's a house and that we have our own little houses in heaven. But when you understand the writing correctly, we're all in the same house in heaven. But when we get there, he just adds on a room to the house. Aren't you glad this morning that Jesus has ultimately given us a promise that he's adding on to his house in heaven and he's welcoming us home when that great day comes? Not only the solution or the cure to the troubled heart is a that we can trust in his promise, but we can also trust in his person. We can trust in his person. This is what the text says in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and I go and prepare a place for you. I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. We can trust in the promise of him. Uh, my brothers and sisters, it's in this text that Jesus says to us that he's leveling himself with God. He says, you believe in God, believe also in me. This is ultimately what he says, that you can trust in his person. This is ultimately what he says to us. He says, Jesus says, I'm physical and you can see me right now. But you can't see God. And he says you can trust in his person because just as you can believe in seeing Jesus, he says you may have a God that you can't see, but you can still believe in him. And I want to ultimately say to the family this morning that it may be this particular time that you are questioning yourself as hurt fills your heart, as pain fills your heart, you're questioning where is God to help aid me through this sorrow that I'm feeling. You may not be able to see him. But I want to suggest to you that he's there. The disciples are hurt. They're frustrated because Jesus, their comfort, is leaving them. And Jesus says to them, I'm leaving you physically, but I'm going to be with you spiritually. You can count on his promises. You can 
trust in his person. And, and finally, you can trust in his presence. Mm -hmm. This is what he says with his presence. He says, in my presence, you can trust because, he says in verse 3, and I go and prepare a place for you, and I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. As I was listening to uh, co-workers, as I was listening uh, to the neighbor, as I was listening to uh, uh, friends uh, speaking about um, uh, our dear brother this morning, as I was listening to them uh, uh, talking about how good of a person that he was, as I was listening uh, to them uh, talk about how uh, good of a resume that he has, and people in other states know his track record stands for himself, but I want to suggest to you, not only does Brother Bush track record stand for himself, that people in Oklahoma and St. Louis and other places, they know him. But I want to suggest to you that as you're going through this, there's another person whose track record we can trust. Uh -huh, yeah. His name is Jesus. Uh -huh, yeah. And we can trust in his presence. We can trust that even when it doesn't seem like Jesus is here, that God is here, when, even when the parts of your life are falling away, you can trust in his presence that he's there even when you can't see him. Even when you're down on your knees and tears are coming from your eyes, you can trust in the presence of God. Why? Because God has a track record and he's never left you alone. I end by telling you, I was listening to his son-in-law speaking about how the railroad traveled from place to place. I was listening to a co-worker speaking about how they travel from place to place. And I end by simply suggesting to you that that's one day that we're going to have to travel. Mm -hmm. Not merely traveling from one resident in this world to the another. There's going to come a day that we're going to have to pack up in this world and not move to the Bahamas for the week, not go to Jamaica for a week, but we're going to have to pack up down here and move to our heavenly home. I'm reminded of a lady who was a multimillionaire and no one knew it. She was stricken with a terminal illness. And as she has been stricken with this terminal illness, she says, I'm going to take my money and I'm going to live in this hotel until my time expires. Mm -hmm. She reaches in the nightstand and she pulls out this brochure. She looks at this brochure and she unfolds it. And the brochure says that it has wall-to-wall -wall carpet. The brochure goes on to say that the bathroom has marble floors. Mm -hmm. the brochure goes on to say that it has vaulted ceilings goes on to talk about all the other amenities that are in this particular room. Uh, she calls for a limousine to come to get her. She gets in the limousine, limousine, she packs her bag, and she gets to this hotel, and she gets out of the limo, and she walks into the hotel, and she begins to look at the floors. She begins to look at the wall. She's looking around. She pulls the brochure out of her bag and she looks at it again. She's looking for the water wall carpet, but she doesn't see it. Mm -hmm. She looks at the brochure again. She looks, she's looking for the vaulted ceilings, but she doesn't see it. She's looking for the marble floors, partially marble floors, but she doesn't see them. She goes on and she's looking for all of the other amenities that she sees in the brochure. And she walks up to the counter and she says to the attendant, she says, sir, I have a brochure and I came here because all the stuff that was in the brochure to spend my last days over the stuff that I saw in the brochure. The attendant looked at her with a smile on her face. He said, ma'am, you're going to get everything that the brochure says, but you can't get it down here. You can't get it until you go upstairs to your room. I suggest to you that we go through heartaches and pains down here. And God has given us a promise. God has shown us his presence. And God has shown us his person.
person, but there are some things that we won't get down here. We won't get until we move to our heavenly home upstairs. We have to cry down here, but it's only when we move upstairs that we won't have to worry about any more sorrow, any more hurt or pain. We go to the doctor and get bad doctor's reports down here. But Sister Bush, it's at that time that when Gabriel put one foot on land and the other on sea and sound the trumpet from and ease it, it's at that time that we're going to move to our heavenly home. No more crying, no more suffering. No more giving up the right for the wrong. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you for this, this cure to our troubled heart. Dear God, I thank you for your promise. Dear God, we thank you for your person. And dear God, we thank you for your presence. Lord, we ask that you continue to keep the promise in the heart of Sister Bush and the rest of this family. Continue to show your presence to them. Dear God, we ask that you continue to show your personhood to them. That as they cry, as they hurt, as they pain, they can understand that they can hold on to your promise and that the other half has not been told. Dear God, we ask that you strengthen her, strengthen the family. Dear God, we ask that you uplift their heads, wipe the tears from their eyes, give them strength like no other. Dear God, we ask these blessings and others up to the only wise and true God. We ask in Jesus who is the Christ's name, we pray. Amen and thank God.